significant figures and scientific notation going to be the topic of this lesson. So we're going to do a lot of calculations in this course and knowing how many digits to include in an answer. So as well as being able to write really little numbers and really big numbers in scientific notation is going to prove important. Those are the two topics in this lesson. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, if you're new to the channel, we've got comprehensive playlists for general chemistry, organic chemistry, general physics, and high school chemistry. And on chadsprep.com, you'll find premium master courses for the same that include study guides and a ton of practice. You'll also find comprehensive prep courses for the DAT, the MCAT, and the OAT. So we're gonna start here with significant figures. So in significant figures is related to how precisely or how exactly we know a number. Now, say you came up to me and, and told me, hey, Chad, just by looking at you, I can determine your height to the nearest meter. Well, to the nearest meter, I'm not gonna be super impressed. But if you said the nearest tenth of a meter, I might be a little more impressed. If you said the nearest hundredth of a meter, well, I might be super impressed. And if you said the nearest thousandth of a meter, well, then I probably think you've got like an app on your phone that helps you predict my height to the nearest thousandth of a meter, because I don't think you can do that uh, just by looking at me. So, but that's kind of a, the idea behind significant figures is there's gonna be a tell, there's gonna be a relationship to how exactly we know a number. Now, it turns out when you look at a number, it turns out that every non-zero digit is significant. That's not the issue. It's the zeros. Sometimes zeros are significant and sometimes zeros are not significant. And we've, that, you know, we've got rules that are going to help us distinguish between that difference and it's going to be super important. So the first rule says that zeros at the beginning of a number are not significant. This is typically going to happen with a number that is smaller than one, like this guy right here. And notice it starts with a big string of zeros. We like to think of those as just placeholders and they are not significant. So the non-zero digits are significant, but the zeros are not in this case. And so this number 0 0.000375 only has three significant figures or three sig figs as we say for short. All right, so what about when a number ends in zeros? Well, it turns out there's two parts to this rule. It depends. Are they left of the decimal or right of the decimal? When they're left of the decimal, as is the case here, notice for numbers bigger than one, we usually don't include the, the decimal. We just leave it invisible, but it's implied that it's there. So, and if a number ends with zeros left of the decimal, as is the case here, those zeros again are not significant. So once again, the three, the seven, and the five, the non-zero digits, those are all significant, but the two zeros are not. And so once again, this number 37,500 has three significant figures. All right. So however, if a number ends in zeros right of the decimal, those zeros are significant. They're going to tell us something about the degree, the, the precision, the exactness to which we know a number that they didn't up here. And so in this case, they are significant and the non-zero digits are significant. And so this number 3.7500 actually has five significant figures. And then finally, the last rule here deals with zeros that are surrounded by significant figures. So we know we've got a significant figure here, here, and here. So these zeros are surrounded. And zeros that are surrounded by other significant figures are themselves significant is the last rule. And so this last one also has five significant figures. So now we know how to assign the zeros. So, and what we're really doing is getting prepared to do some mathematical operations. So it turns out when we do multiplication and division, how you figure out how many significant figures are in your answer is gonna be related to how many significant figures are in the inputs. And so being able to assign some zeros can prove important. So it turns out there's gonna be a slightly different rule for addition and subtraction. We'll deal with that one when we get there. But let's take a look at that one for multiplication and division. All right, so we're gonna do a simple multiplication problem here. So before we do, let's just talk about why we're even worrying about this. So uh, let's say I want to take a trip and I want to go from here in Phoenix uh, to Washington, D.C. And you said, well, how, Chad, how far is it? How far is the trip? And I said, well, it's like 2,000 miles. So now, did it sound like I had a really good idea of exactly how far it was? I said, it's like 2,000 miles. Probably not. Well, if I write it this way, so the zeros are not significant in this number, it's only the two. And what that really means is that the most significant digit is the thousands place, so it's really rounded kind of like to the nearest thousand miles. That's not very exact. And in saying it's like 2,000 miles, doesn't sound like it's very exact. As well. Now, I might have implied, I might have intended it actually to mean something more exact than to the nearest thousand miles. So, but that's not writing that number. That's not what that would mean. It would mean to the nearest thousand miles. So, in this case, let's just say I said it was like 2,000 miles. And then you said, well, how far is the first third of the journey? Well, if I multiply that by a third, I get 
you know, repeating decimal, six is all the way across, and I just decide to round it like there. And I say, it is exactly 666.67 miles. And you're like, really? Because you said it was like 2,000 miles for the entire journey, but then you're like, it's exactly 666.67 miles for one third of the journey. Can you really know it that exactly if you knew the original number only kind of approximately? Well, no, you can't. That's kind of the point of significant figures. If the numbers you start with, you only know them somewhat approximately, you can't know your answer any better, any more precisely, any more exactly than the least degree to which you know any of your inputs. That's kind of the idea. So with multiplication and division, your answer is gonna be rounded to the same number of sig figs as whatever of your inputs has the lowest number of sig figs. That's the rule for multiplication and division. Now it turns out it doesn't really matter if you're just multiplying two numbers or if you're multiplying a whole string of numbers or if you're doing multiplication and division with a whole string of numbers. As long as none of that calculation involves any addition or subtraction, so you only gotta apply this rule once. You can do the whole string of multiplication and division and then just do the sig figs once at the end. So if we do this, and we're gonna use our calculator here, so 2.73 times 6.584, it's gonna get us 17 and some change here. So, and in this case, that's gonna be 17. And I'm gonna write originally as 97432. That's what my calculator says. But again, there's no way I can know this number this exactly. So, and if we look back at our original inputs, we can see that the first number has three sig figs. The second one's got four sig figs. And therefore I can really only know this answer to the first three sig figs, the lower of the two. And so what I'm gonna to have to do is round it to three sig figs. So I didn't actually need to write all of this number out off my calculator. I really needed to start off with one extra digit so I know how to round that third sig fig. And in this case, because it's a five or higher, it's a seven, I'm gonna round up. And so in this case, the nine's gonna round up to a zero and then carry the one, the seven becomes an eight. So, and this is gonna to round to become 18.0 in three sig figs. And again, that zero is significant because it ends a number to the right of the decimal. Okay, so that's multiplication and division. So what about addition and subtraction? So let's take a look at the example on the study guide here. All right, so here's the addition we're gonna do here. It's 1,540 plus 327.4 plus 0 0.267. Now, if we take a look at where the significant figures are, so we've got a significant figure in the thousands place, in the hundreds place, and in the tens place, but that zero is not significant. It ends a number, but it's left of the decimal. And so the most, you know, the greatest degree to which we know this number is at the tens place. So my answer can't be better on the, than the tens place according to this number. Now this one here, we've got a significant figure in the hundreds place, the tens place, the ones place, and the tenths place. We know this number to the plus or minus tenth, if you will. So, and if all I had to look at was this number, I'd say I can't know my answer better than the tenths place. Well, based on the first one, I already said I can't know my answer better than the tens place. So I'm definitely not gonna ever make it to the tenths place here. And so finally on this last one, we've got a significant digit in the tenths place, the hundredths place, the thousandths place. So it's kind of like 0.267 plus or minus a thousandth. So, but there's no way we're gonna know our answer to the nearest thousandth because we can't know it any better than the nearest tens place. And so the number of sig figs, it's not about the number of sig figs, it's about the place. And in this case, it's gonna have, my answer can have significant figures all the way to the tens place, but no further. So sometimes it's convenient to kind of write these out a little bit different, line them up the way you would have back in grade school arithmetic. So there's 1540, 327.4, and then 0.267. And I can see here that this one's only significant to the tens place, this one to the tenths place, and this one to the thousandths place. And so it's only gonna be able to get an answer uh, rounded to the nearest tens place, if you will. And I'm gonna use my calculator again here. So we got 1540 plus 327.4 plus 0.267, and we're gonna get 1867. 0.667. But again, there's no way we can actually know it this precisely based on the inputs. So, and in fact, from the get-go, we already knew we were gonna have to round it to the nearest tens place. And so really, I didn't have to write all these numbers. I could have stopped with one extra digit there and wrote 1867 to figure out where I was gonna round that six to. And in this case, that six is gonna round up. And so the true answer in the appropriate number of sig figs 
Well, it's not 187 if that's what you thought it was going to be, because 187 is not even the same number or in the ballpark as 1,867. I have to include that zero right there, so that's still approximately the same number. That's 1,870, but notice that zero is not significant. So it's rounded to the nearest 10 in this case. So, but a zero at the end of a number left of the decimal is not significant. So, but that is the answer expressed in the correct number of sig figs. So what if we've got a little more complex calculation that involves some addition, subtraction, some multiplication, division, what do we do? I'm glad you asked, because that's the next problem we're gonna take a look at. So when you've got a calculation that involves some multiplication, division, and some addition and subtraction, you've gotta carry out your order of operations in the normal order you do it in, So, but you've gotta apply the appropriate number of sig figs at every step along the way. So in this case, we've gotta add the two terms in the numerator before we divide by 0 0.5. So we're gonna add those together, so in the first term, we know it precisely all the way to the nearest hundredth, but in the second term, only to the nearest tenth. And so the answer from adding those together can only be rounded to the nearest tenth place. And so in this case, we're gonna get 4.23 plus 7.6. Well, four and seven is 11. 0.23 and 0.6 is 0.83, but we can't, again, know it quite that precisely. We're gonna have to round it to the nearest tenths place. And in this case, it's gonna round down. So we'll just get rid of that three and it's 11.8. And then we are gonna divide that by 0 0.50. And in this case, when doing multiplication and division, it's about the number of sig figs. Well, in the top number, we've got three sig figs. In the bottom one, we've just got two sig figs. So the zero at the beginning of a number, not significant, but the zero at the end, if it's to the right-hand side of the decimal, is significant. So. And so three sig figs on the numerator, two sig figs on the denominator, our answer is only gonna be allowed to have two sig figs then for doing multiplication or division, division in this case. Well, dividing by 0.5 is the same thing as multiplying by two. So we're gonna have two times 11 is 22, two times 0.8 is 1.6, 22 plus 1.6 is 23.6. But again, I'm not allowed to have three sig figs, I'm limited to two sig figs. And so I'm gonna have to Keep this one, keep this one, but we'll round the three here. And in this case, it rounds up to a four. And so the correct answer rounded to the appropriate number of sig figs is 24. So now we're gonna briefly talk about scientific notation. And scientific notation is just a really convenient way to often express either really small numbers or really large numbers. Now technically you can express any number in scientific notation. It's not limited to just really small ones or really big ones. It's just that's where it has its real utility. So you might recognize this number from chemistry. This is Avogadro's number, the number of something in a mole of something. So, and it's a huge number and it takes forever just to write out and then you gotta like go back and verify to write the appropriate number of zeros and things of this sort. It's a pain in the butt with a really large number to write it out like this. But with scientific notation, you might better know that Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power and it saves myself a lot of headache in writing it in such fashion. So that's the advantage here of writing something in scientific notation. So let's talk about how this works. And we'll talk about it in the context of a little bit smaller number here. So we'll start with 472,000, a fairly large number, definitely not anywhere near as large as Avogadro's number, but a fairly large number. And how do we write it in scientific notation? Well, first off, for a number that is larger than one, it has that invisible decimal place right there. And to properly write a number in scientific notation, you've gotta end up uh, with a, a number part of it with only one digit left of the decimal place. Well, that means, I'm gonna move the decimal place over to here so that there's only a single digit left of the decimal place. And then you calculate how many places you're gonna move that decimal in order to accomplish this. And in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five places. Well, notice the decimal system is based off powers of 10. Every place you, you know, move over a decimal is a power of 10. By moving it over five places, that's five powers of 10 or a factor of 100,000. And so in this case, we're gonna end up with 4.72 and then times 10 to a power. And in this case, it's 10 to the power of five. Now here's the deal. If you've got a number that's larger than one, then you're gonna have a positive power of 10. But some people teach us a little bit different. They say, if you end up moving the decimal to the left, that's a positive power of 10. Well, great, it works the same way either way. My personal preference though, is just remembering that for large numbers, i.e. numbers bigger than one, positive power of 10. We'll find out for small numbers, small numbers that are smaller than one, that's when you're gonna have the negative power of 10. All right, so in this case, uh, to get it to the point where we've got our decimal 
with only one digit left of it. So we need to move it one, two, three, only four times in this case. But notice we're moving it to the right this time instead of the left. And we're gonna end up with 4.72 times 10 to the, and in this case we moved it four places, but again, it's a number that is smaller than one, so it's negative four. Or we move the decimal to the right, so it's negative four. Some people associate it that way as well. If you've already got a way that works for you, fantastic, stick with it. But again, my personal preference for numbers larger than one, a positive power of 10, for numbers smaller than one, a negative power of 10. So if you didn't have some way that was working for you, that's my personal favorite. Okay, so that's scientific notation. So, but there's one other thing I wanted to kind of show, the other advantage to scientific notation. And it relates back to sig figs here. And so that when you write scientific notation, because we're only allowing there to be one digit left of the decimal, and it has to be a non-zero digit, so you're never going to end up starting a number with zeros. And one of those rules involving sig figs is never going to apply. And it turns out as a result though, is that in a number that's properly written with scientific notation, all the zeros will be significant anytime you write one of those numbers, all the time. So let's go back to this example of like Phoenix to Washington DC. And instead of saying it's 2000 miles, maybe I got a little better approximation now. And I say that it's 1,940 miles. Well, when I write it like this, what this means is it's rounded to the nearest 10 miles because that zero is not significant. But maybe I got on Google and actually I'm like, no, 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 no. I got on Google. It is 1,940 miles to the nearest mile, not to the nearest 10 miles, to the nearest mile. Well, how do I write that? Well, again, we learned you can put a bar over the top and that's one way to indicate that a zero is significant. So, but if you write this in scientific notation, well, again, we've got the invisible decimal here. We've got to move it three places to get it to the appropriate spot. And so this would be 1.94 times 10 to the third in this case. Now here's the deal. What if I had intended that zero to be significant? Well then include it in your scientific notation. And it ends a number right of the decimal and will by default be significant when written in scientific notation. And I don't have to worry about putting a bar over or anything like that. Well, what if I'd known it's not just 1940, it's 1940.0. I now I actually looked it up and it's to the nearest 10th of a mile. Well, great, just add another zero in the scientific notation. So, and you don't have to worry about it. Life is good. That's, again, the other nice thing about scientific notation is just the zeros will always be significant, all of them when properly written in scientific notation. So some of this idea of you know how to indicate when zeros are need to be significant, when they don't look significant and stuff, just kind of vanishes away. Now, if you've liked this lesson, you've found it beneficial, then go ahead and like this lesson and help me reach as broad an audience as possible. Happy studying.